stand here is the Legion. Their hands washed. You escaped us in the mines. This time.
have the favor of my mother's gods. Look, Jane Cassinder has turned and run. <laughs> Fires in this place give us strength, Legionnaire. My handmaids and I will burn you to dust! Thank <laughs> you. 
turns and runs. She will not escape judgment. defeated my archons, crushed my soldiers, defiled this most holy of places. No more. The gods of my mother stand with me, while you have nothing but the ghosts of your broken legion. If any of you pretend to piety, pray to your gods now.
my head to you. Neither will I grovel or beg. Don't force me to kill you. Rajani and your handmaids want you to live. Rajani is no handmaid of mine. When she threw herself at your feet, she renounced her kinship with me. But I am not alone. My gods have not abandoned me. Not yet. They dance like shadows at the corner of my eye. And they whisper in my ear. I will go before the gods of my mother. Appeal to them for aid. And call her fallen sisters back from death. And when I return, we shall drive you from this kingdom that is mine by right! Where is Jane? Is she... Vanished. She went to find her mother's gods, to appeal to them for help. But they are long dead. Unless she means... The forest. The place you call the Mournweald. It grew from a seed of the first creation. Perhaps it contains an echo of our gods. Are you saying that your gods aren't dead? A part of them lives on? Any fragment of the first creation would contain all the power of our gods, and perhaps a remnant of their minds as well. They would only exist as a potential, a possibility, but even in such a reduced state, they would be strong. She thinks she can restore the other Archons to life with the help of her gods. Our legends say that no Archon could ever truly die. Their fires could always be kindled again if our gods willed it so. If Jane restored them all to life, she would have an army behind her. Just how many Archons were there when your gods were alive? We counted ourselves as numerous as the stars in the sky. Indeed, the stars were fashioned in our honor. One for each of our sisters. Or so the stories tell us. And this seed, could it take the form of a tree? I don't know. None of us were able to enter the forest, except for Jane's mother, and Jane herself. But I suppose it would take an appropriate form. If it gave birth to a forest, it might appear as a tree, yes. We've got to follow Jane. How can we get to the Mornwield from here? Jane built this place on the ruin of a Legion stronghold. I've seen one of your causeways in the dungeon below. The gate was hidden behind a locked door, but Jane entrusted her handmaids with a key. I have it here. Now that Jane has fled, where will you and your sisters go? We shall watch and wait. My sisters may not all believe. But this battle doesn't only chart the course of your kingdom. It also foretells the future of our race. Do we follow Jane, the first sister of old? Or a new road led by the prophet who walks at your side? You mean... me? Yes. You may not remember your life before, but you challenged Jane's mother in the Mournwheels. For that offense, you die. You were called back to life with purpose as the harbinger of Jane's fall. I believe that you were meant to take her place. But we will see. I tried not to harm the other Archons, but I couldn't be sure they survived. Thank you. They are alive, all of them. Soraya is with them now. I know my sisters. They'll see Jane's defeat as a sign that she led us astray. None of us will follow her again. Martin. What about our army? Has the battle ended? We've won, but only thanks to you. A few of Jane's people surrendered, the others all fled. You're too humble, Martin. I didn't win your battle for you. No, I don't mean to be modest. We held our own, but we'd never have swept them off the field. When the fire burst from the top of the tower, the fighting nearly stopped, with everyone straining to see. Then the fire went out, and Jane's army knew that she lost. They ran like autumn leaves before a storm. 
Can we take the elevator down to the dungeon? Yes. No need to stop in the chancel. It will take you all the way to the dungeon below. I'm with you. Let's go and see if this causeway is still intact. Made it out alive, did you? Not bad. Since you did El Fitch a favor, let El Fitch do one for you. Got some good stuff here. I'll sell it cheap. I consider his offer. You won't have another chance to buy weapons or gear before you face Jay. I've still got plenty of stuff here. So, one way or another, this is the end of our road. Shall we go? Stay here, Martin. Someone needs to take charge of this fire. I thought you might say that. Meister Wolf doesn't lack for nerve, but the man's a bit mad. Seems wrong, though. We started this journey together. I would have liked to have been there at the end. You're a good friend, Martin. Take care. We'll expect all the automatons to be clean and well polished by the time. Remember, out of all the survivors of the Legion, the Radiant Youth chose you. He appeared to no one else. I think he chose well, and I'd follow you down any route. Goodbye, my friend.
he prays. You're here. You won't believe what's happened. It started just before this... Is the chapter house under attack? Not just the chapter house. More like the whole bloody valley. Something terrible is happening. It's like the sky's been set afire. Come with me. I'll show you. Legionnaire! It seems that you've arrived just in time for the end. We're alive, aren't we? Don't be so quick to give up hope. Hope? You think I should have hope? Look! The signs are all around us! Stars are dropping from the heavens and we are all going to die! You see? It is falling to think of hope. I need to get to the Morn Wheel, now! I have the key to the lower level. We'll need it if we're heading into the forest. Let's get Armand and Lazar out of here. They should be safe enough in the causeway. A causeway? But I thought only legionnaires were allowed to... Yes, yes, by all means, niggle over the finer points of obsolete bylaws while the roof falls down. Excellent point. To the causeway, then. wanted to do this, to travel by causeway like the legionnaires of old. I'm happy for you. It would be a shame to get this close, only to die under a pile of rock. Go on. Head through the causeway. You should be safe in there. Here, take this key. You'll need it to unlock the door downstairs. Until our paths cross again. <laughs> Hopefully sooner than later, hey? to be at your side. I believe that we will pass this final test, and Jane Cassandra will fall.
feel like I've seen this creature before. Somehow, it is kin to me. Jane Cassinder is close. She found her way to the tree at the center of the forest, and she's waiting for you there. I came to warn you. She is not alone. So Jane did what she promised. She called the other Archons back to life? Yes. The Davis, too. And something else. Something far worse. It hasn't taken shape. So those four-armed demons have a name. No one has seen a Deva since the dawn of the world. They serve the Creator Gods, just as the Archons did. If Archons were couriers and envoys, then Devas were soldiers. The wrathful hand of their gods. Even then, they were said to be terrible. But not as monstrous as you see them now. Jane called something else back to life? Do you know what it is? Nothing I have seen before. But anything is possible here. This forest grew from seed of the first creation. It's alive with the power of the old creator gods. Jane has tapped that power. She has used it wrongly, yes. But it's still the same power that gave birth to the world. Limited only by her mortal mind. But it won't matter. If you strike now, you can still defeat her. We have to end this. Our allies won't be able to stop her with an army of Archons at her back. And these Archons are even more unpleasant than they usually are. Present company accepted. The presence that is taking shape, it forced me from the grove. Its power is much older than mine. But I will try to weaken Jane's allies, to stop as many as I can from coming to her aid. And I will be with you again, before the end. Jane Cassinder has done. It is tearing the Mornwield apart.
we're nearly there. Only a little farther, I think. Followed me here. You are stubborn, and I admire you for that. But you should never have come. I have restored the Archons to life, just as I promised. All this for what? To win a crown? Yes, to take back this kingdom, as is my right. The Archons are not all that has returned. The power of creation still lives in this grove. And anything can be born anew. Even the Creator Gods themselves. Is she mad? She can't mean...
voices of my mother's gods. I cannot hear them anymore. Not even a whisper. They are lost. You will not see them or hear them ever again. You lie, child. Or whatever you truly are behind that innocent face. No, Jane Cassander. I speak the truth. What remained of your mother's gods has been destroyed, and the power of creation has fled this grove. It will never return. That power was dangerous. Better that it's gone. No. It was precious. My mother searched for thousands of years, and this was the only remnant of her gods that she ever found. The power in this forest might have been used to restore the old gods and all their servants to life. Not the twisted half-life that you gave them, Jane Cassander. A true rebirth, as they were at the dawn of the world. But you called upon that power to destroy, not to create. You twisted the power of creation to your own ends until all that was left was an empty shell, rotted from within. And now, it is gone. Why did this power respond to Jane and no one else? Jane's mother was first sister. When she died, her fire passed to Jane. The first sister stood at the right hand of her gods. Only pale shadows of their minds persisted in this grove. But they remembered her. That is why Jane saw her gods in visions and dreams. And that is why Jane could unlock the power that was buried here. The forest was already corrupted, even before Jane tried to call the Archons back to life. The first time Jane called on the power of the old gods, it was to murder Hugh Montbaron, 30 years ago. She knew she was misusing that power, but she was too full of anger, and she didn't care. After that, the Mornwield grew rotten and sick. All its potential for good was lost. So she came back and made the same mistake a second time. Yes, driven by anger again. So the Archons that she called back to life were nothing but monsters. It was the same for the Creator God. The creature that you fought was shaped by Jane's fury and guilt. Guilt? Yes, Jane Cassander. You can hide your remorse from yourself, but you cannot hide it from me. And the Archons I fought in the forest? The ones that Jane restored to life? Dead. Wilted like blossoms, and scattered to the wind. When you slew the reborn god, all Jane's creations were undone. In time, the forest will recover, but it will be ordinary, no longer the Morn Wheel, with the power of creation at its heart. We have a decision to make, what to do with Jane. Wait, I have a question, and I may never be able to ask it again. I was born in this grove 30 years ago, was I not? Yes, I found you here on the day the Legion died, and I carried you to the forest's edge. So the Creator Gods, whatever remained of them, they called me back to life. That may be, yes. If that's true, it must have happened quickly, soon after Jane destroyed the Legion, but before the forest became corrupt. Perhaps the Creator Gods knew that they were doomed, and they wanted Anjali to destroy them, to undo Jane's mistake. If that is true, then at least I've honored them. Thank you. Your words give me comfort. 
And Jane? What of her? What do we gain from killing her? It is a principal tenet of all reputable philosophy that anyone may be rehabilitated. Must we not try? Remember what she did. Not only to my father, but to all the rest of the Legion, too. It was her crime that started this. As long as she lives, Jane is a threat. A sword hanging over our necks. The Legion will never be safe. Not until she is dead. I expect no mercy from the Legion. Do as you like. Before I pass judgment on you, I want to know why you acted as you did. Honestly, and in your own words. Why did I murder your father? That is what you want to hear. Is it not? I was young, full of anger. My own father was dead by the Legion's hand. So I raised an army. I swore to avenge him myself, if I had to carve my way through every chapter house in Ebb. If the other Legionnaires had handed over Mont Baron, I would never have hunted them down. But they were so stubborn, so loyal to their chief. That was wrong of me. I should not have punished the whole Legion for Mont Baron's sin. You're sorry for killing the Legionnaires, but not for killing Mont Baron. I take no pride in the pain I caused you. But I am not sorry for the death of Hugh Mont Baron. No, I would kill him again. He murdered my father, and I don't care what his reasons were. You asked for honesty. There you have it. The Moon Mute was sacred to your people, and especially to your mother. Why would you confront the Legion here? Mont Baron lured me to this place. Somehow, he knew what I was. And he knew that this forest was sacred to me. He believed that I would never dare to strike him down. Not in the presence of my mother's gods. He was wrong. You used the power of the Mornwield against him. Mont Baron was so arrogant. So sure that he'd outmaneuvered me. That smug look on his face. With no hint of remorse for what he'd done. That was what doomed him. Most of all. I will never understand why the forest allowed him to enter. When so many others were kept out. Unless your gods meant to test you. Perhaps they wanted to know if your devotion to them was stronger than your rage. I... I never thought of that. If that is true, then I failed them. You've told me why you destroyed the Legion, but why fight a war with the Queen? I will answer your question with one of my own. Do you believe that Rosalind would make a stronger Queen than me? My father was a king, my mother a chief among her people and chosen of her gods. I have made mistakes, yes, but I know how to lead. And Rosalyn, she has the heart of a lamb. Would you trust the rebuilding of this kingdom to a sheltered little girl? If Rosalind falters, the Legion will keep the country whole. Be careful. I hear the echo of Hugh Mont Baron behind those words. Take too strong a hand, and the people will cast your legion down again. I have no more questions. I've made my decision. And I am ready for your judgment, though I know what it will be. You may not expect any mercy from the legion, but I won't kill you. Not today. Am I to be your prisoner, then? Paraded through the streets in a gilded cage. Atone for all the suffering you've caused. Help us to rebuild the kingdom. Maybe build more colleges and less oversized fortresses this time around? You are not the Legion I remember. They were arrogant. 
and they would never have proposed such a thing. Very well. You have my promise. I will use what influence I have to help you heal this country. Let the war between us end. By those words, Jane Cassinder, you are bound to the Legion now. It's over then. For now, you deserve a rest. But it may be short-lived. We need to build our strength and train more Legionnaires. You will find many willing to join the Legion now. Even a few who might surprise you. And you will need them. Soon. The country is still divided. And the Legion has many old enemies. Who yet live. But you've shown yourself to be fair. As well as strong. Whatever happens, the people of Ebb will stand behind you. You and I started this together. Whatever comes next, I will follow where you lead. Time to leave, I think. Odo and Martin must be waiting for news. We part ways, then. I will be watching. And one day, I will see you again. You bid farewell to the Radiant Youth, and he sent you back to our chapter house in Stonebridge, where I awaited your return. In the weeks that followed, news spread of Jane Cassinder's defeat. Her army scattered, giving us time to rest and regroup. Martin Giscard returned safely from the Spire, along with Meister Wolf and the Automaton army. Only a few weeks later, elections were held in Stonebridge. Meister Wolf, who had been so public in his support of the Legion, almost won the office of the mayor. But he was defeated in the end. Many people had wanted the dapper old gent to hang. They resented the fact that the Legion had spared his life, and they blamed poor Wolf. After the humiliating events in the Foundry, Meister Castle was forced to resign as Guildmaster of Ironmonger. The Cyclopses negotiated a new contract for higher wages, and with the help of Meister Fiddlewick, formed a new workers' union. For the first time in a hundred years, they were permitted to leave the foundry and spend their newfound wealth in the markets and taverns of Stonebridge. Cyclopses are becoming an increasingly common sight in Stonebridge, and many believe that they will eventually take their place as equal citizens of the town. Ashambo du Payen, Formerly known as the Dapper Old Gent, proved a valuable addition to the Legion. His knowledge of Legion magic allowed us to retake control of the sentinels that had long guarded our chapter houses and estates. But the Gent couldn't leave our chapter house without drawing an angry mob. His confinement started to drive him mad. So he returned to his beloved causeways beneath an endless sky, and he dwells there still. With the reopening of the Hero's Crypt, pilgrims returned to the Rukenval, and merchants followed. The following winter was harsh, just as Lazar Basili feared. But thanks to the trade from the south, the people of Ravensrill stayed warm and thin. When spring came, many more pilgrims arrived, and the town of Ravensrill grew wealthy again. Lazar and his people built a new stone wall around the town and reclaim their abandoned houses and farmsteads from the forest. It is a happy change of fortune for a long-suffering town. In his last letter to me, Lazar added one other piece of news. Gunderick Manor has a new mistress, a witch called the Ona. The manor has become a gathering place for scores of Lascanzi witches, many of whom are apparently quite Lazar reports that the young men of Ravensrill have also begun frequenting the manor, much to the irritation of their mothers and wives. Since the local men will not hear any talk of banishing the witches, it appears that Leona and her people have found a new home, which was perhaps what she intended from the start. Queen Rosalind abandoned Glitterdown, embarking on a tour of all the cities and towns of the West, meeting as many of her subjects as she could. 
The queen showed all the energy of youth, and I think she fully expects to reunite the country in a matter of months, not years. Reality may not be so kind as Lord Devonsey has tried to make her understand. In truth, the future of this country depends more upon what we decide. If she doesn't have the Legion behind her, the Queen is only a single voice, well-meaning though she might be. Rajani and her sisters return to Stonebridge, quietly and carefully disguised. Jane Cassandra's defeat affected them deeply, though not in the way I expected. Their devotion to Jane was replaced by a deep admiration for your companion, Anjali. I think they saw in Anjali the leader they should have followed all along, and they have lately expressed a desire to join our ranks. I maintain my suspicion of any Archon who once followed Jane, but I believe that redemption is not impossible even for them. Jane Cassander was as good as her word, though I had my doubts at first. She returned to the cities and towns of the East and urged the people to end their war with the Legion and the Crown. Jane's repentance was heartfelt, and many were swayed by her words. But others have not been so compliant. The Church Synod in Bisselburg, who once called Jane a saint, have declared her apostate and threatened her life. Though Jane refuses bodyguards of any kind, Queen Rosalind fears for her life. And if anything befalls her, our gains in the East may yet be lost. As for the Legion, the rest of our story is yet to be told. We have a nation to reforge, a fellowship to rebuild, and old enemies who would see us destroyed. And we have questions to decide. Who will assume true power in Eb if the nation is restored? And who will take the mantle of Grand Master? But these matters I leave for another chronicle, and another time. Whatever happens, Know that you will not face the future alone. The Legion will stand by you, always.